increases. Let's bring in Simon Michel from Fig Securities. Um, let's put the Fed aside. We'll get to the Fed. Look, some breaking news. I'm not sure if you've had a chance to see it, but Macquarie um, releasing some notes to some $400 million uh, looking to raise potentially more, potentially less. They say they don't really give a reason as to why other than to suggest that their balance sheet with or without it is in uh, good shape. This comes after, of course, Next DC. We've had um, an insurer out as well about a month ago. The, the corporates going to market, in particular looking uh, at debt. What do you make of it and do you expect more of it? Good hey, morning, James. Uh, look, I think it's probably some good timing, really, as uh, reposition for the U.S. Uh, setting up higher rates which could also be reflected here. So it sort of makes sense in this low rate environment for the for companies that are looking to uh, raise a little bit more debt to move sooner rather than later. We've certainly seen that. There's a great appetite for corporate debt. Obviously, investors happy to take uh, advantage of a slightly higher yield uh, than some of the government issues. And uh, we've also seen uh, a lot of um, uh, buying back or, or refinancing of uh, bonds as uh, mm. yields have come in and, uh, and we've seen that with a uh, bit of Fortescue move there. So, look, I, I think it's, uh, it's good timing uh, for corporates. There's good uh, demand for it uh, in this low rate environment. So uh, we're likely to see more, I would suggest. How difficult is the pricing? I mean, no, yeah. y as you say, there, there's certainly plenty of demand for it, but there's plenty of options out there as well. I mean, how, how difficult a si situation or process is it getting the, the pricing right? Yeah, look, obviously there'll be a lot of sounding out with uh, some key investors before they actually come out to market with a bit of pricing guide. Um, the big BHP issue we saw a few weeks ago, that was definitely able to be issued on the low side of uh, mm. where they indicated <coughs> the margin would be, uh, and that reflected uh, the appetite there. So, uh, you know, I think they would have done a bit of research ahead, and I would be very surprised if uh, uh, they had to pay any sort of higher than uh, indicated there. Uh, there's good demand for, for bank debt. Uh, banks have certainly uh, improved their capital levels. Uh, and that's more positive, less risk, obviously, for investors. So I don't imagine Macquarie would have any problems. Mm. Um, just taking a look, I guess, you know, markets really preparing now for this December liftoff, becoming a lot more comfortable with the fact that the Fed may be moving. What are we seeing in terms of the US yield curve? Yeah, well, it's interesting. We're seeing a, a real flattening there. So what that means is that the shorter yields, the two year especially, is certainly moving higher. That's up around uh, 92 basis points, uh, just about to hit that 1% level. And you, you mentioned this in the earlier early report, you know, this, this low inflation environment is not seeing much volatility on the longer end of the curve. So we're actually seeing those 10 year, those 30 years drifting a little lower over the week. And that just reflects that uh, view that should the Fed move in December, it won't signal uh, a flurry of increases. Uh, you know, it's going to be a very slow, very moderate increase in rates. And the market's certainly uh, buying into that view by keeping those longer term yields quite steady while we see those short-term ones uh, moving higher to reflect that uh, expectation of that move in uh, next month. What about those Aussie yield curves? How are we looking them? How are they playing out at the moment? Yeah, look, pretty steady really from last week. Uh, so we haven't had a lot of move there. Not a lot of news this week either. We've got the US uh, Thanksgiving uh, Day holiday on Thursday, so it's a short week in the US. Uh, not a lot of data in Australia. We've got uh, Governor Stevens speaking on Thursday night, I believe. So uh, look, I think it's going to be slow and steady into next week where we get the final uh, RBA uh, interest rate uh, indication whether they move or not I don't anticipate they will so it's pretty steady she goes I think I think the RBA is pretty comfortable and I think the RBA would be looking to see what the US does because if the US does raise rates next month that certainly takes a bit of pressure off the RBA uh, needing to make any move on their cash rate Simon Mario Draghi is he is he the number one central banker in the world at the moment at least when it comes to communicating to markets look I, he's certainly been very much on the, on that message and it's a bit of a case of Look, we'll do what we need to do. They're going to be reviewing the ECB uh, stimulus package, the bond buying program they have over there, about 60 billion euros a month. Uh, and uh, he said that they will increase that. They might expand it to take on additional uh, bond issuances as well. Uh, they might look at reducing uh, or increasing their level of exposure that they can have for each uh, central bank as well. Um, and that's all really about just providing better support for the markets there. The markets seem to be pretty happy with that, um, mm -hmm. but uh, a little uncertain of what that might mean until, uh, until next month. Mm, certainly seems like um, off the back of that, we're seeing European equities being bought quite strongly, but the euro actually tumbling, I believe it was the worst performing currency last week. So I guess we're seeing some moves there. I mean, what about the bond market? 
Yeah, look, it's interesting. I think the bond market's pretty comfortable with what Mario Drag has been saying, and so that's provided a little bit more demand out mm. there for bonds. We've seen yields drift a little bit uh, lower on the back of that. Uh, but I think, as you mentioned, it, it is also positive for not only uh, the equity markets, but also emerging markets as well. And we've certainly seen some extra demand for that. Uh, as well and that's obviously positive uh, for the emerging market space so you know I think it all plays uh, you know pretty uh, comfortably for investors at the moment I think uh, you know once we get over this uh, uh, the move uh, possible move in December for US uh, if we see some expansion by the ECB uh, then that certainly sets the markets up well for 2016. Great stuff thanks Simon. Thanks Simon. Thanks James.